Hello, this is Geo Techlin, and today I'm going to be taking a look at several Linux desktop environments and distros. And I'm going to be talking about what they're doing well, what they can improve on. So I'm going to be looking at some of our favorites like the GNOME Desktop, KDE, Pop OS is Cosmic, and many, many more. No Linux distribution will be safe from my brutally honest critiques tonight. So let's take a look. So starting with the GNOME desktop here, the GNOME team prides itself on providing a user-friendly, minimalist experience. And I do like that their UI appears to be very uncluttered, but that minimalist approach also means that you don't have a minimize or maximize button by default and the dock is not visible unless you click this activities button or tap the super key on your keyboard. However, GNOME has the best software center providing a lot of information on their apps and it is very well integrated with Flathub slash Flatpaks, which is probably the best way to download Linux apps now. In this GNOME 42 version, which is their upcoming version, they are also introducing their lib 8 Weta theme, which has a very nice looking theme, especially their dark theme, which you can see now. And of course, the downside of that is that it might make it much more difficult for theme makers and distributions to tweak the apps. But I'm hoping that eventually down the line that they do start allowing and building some sort of API to allow people to create their own dark theme and light theme variants that are still compatible with GNOME apps. Overall though, I think this GNOME desktop provides a premium experience for users. Although you do have the option of tweaking the default GNOME look and feel by installing GNOME extensions. So in a sense, with some tweaking, you could get a lot of those additional options and modifications. Then moving over to the other major desktop environment, KDE. Here I'm running Manjaro KDE through a virtual machine with GNOME boxes. KDE in some ways feels like the exact opposite of GNOME because they do cater to Windows users more. And opposite of GNOME, they offer tons of options. The start menu feels a lot like home for Windows users. And if you right click the start button here, you can actually have alternative start options. So I switched it to a full screen. And so you get this sort of nicer full screen applications menu that some people may like. Default software center. From a UI standpoint especially, it is not as premium as the GNOME Software Center we just looked at. But overall, it is very functional and does what it needs to do. Now, when you go to the system settings, here you can see that by default, it'll show you a quick settings. You can switch to a light or a dark theme and change the wallpaper. But if you look over here, there's tons of options for personalizations. While I do like that it gives users a lot of choice, I think it does it in a way that is very not so user friendly. You can customize so much that it may be a bit overwhelming actually. Like I do like that you can choose from a pre-selected set of icons and you can download some more, but other settings like adjusting the like the plasma style sometimes or the application style, you start thinking, what, what am I actually changing? Like it's very unclear in my opinion. Now more about this ability to download global themes. This is actually a very good thing. I feel like this needs to be the default for virtually every desktop environment or every distro. However, in my experience using and playing around with these themes can be buggy. As you can see here, the content available here has been uploaded by users like you and has not been reviewed by your distributor for functionality or stability, so I want it to be functional and stable. It is a lot of work, but I would rather have a very select few global themes than a bunch of different ones that are unverified. But overall, as long as you're not tweaking a lot of things, KDE seems to be a very good desktop environment. Moving over to one of my favorite Linux desktop environments is the Zorin environment here where they forked GNOME and added a very nice looking theme and also gives the user a lot more options. If you go to the Zorin appearance, they have a layout chooser, which is also another thing that I think every desktop environment should have by default. And of course, instead of overwhelming the user with tons of options that are not tested, 
Here they have a select few options that are a bit better tested. So you can go a Windows Classic or Windows XP sort of environment, or you can go for a environment that's like GNOME 3, but maybe more Mac OS slash Windows 10 hybrid. Then of course there's a vanilla GNOME look and feel that's very minimalist. And then by default it comes with the more Windows 10 like environment here. And Zorin was the first theme that helped me determine what makes a good desktop environment or it set the tone for what I think every desktop environment should strive for with this balance of giving the user choice but not overwhelming them. So I like that here. It also gives you, you know, a light theme, dark theme switcher here and some accent colors. The accent color kind of changes the hue of the desktop so I feel like that's like a bug that still hasn't really been fixed or maybe it's left by default but that takes away from the experience i think their os is a bit dated in that they base their os on a very older version of ubuntu so like even looking at their software center i think they're still on yeah they're still on gnome 3.36 software center whereas most other distros have updated or they have a different more nicer looking software center if you look at their mesa graphics drivers they're a bit more behind with 21.0 whereas a lot of other distros are on 21.1 or 21.2 although this may not matter much to you if you're on nvidia but if you're on an amd gpu this may matter a bit more and in terms of updating users they don't really post a lot on their social media accounts they don't really post a lot of blog posts about what they're doing the recent version of Zorin 16 seemed like it was a few months delayed. And so I feel like that's an area where they could improve on. Now, speaking of Linux distros that cater to Windows users, another popular option for that is Linux Mint. Linux Mint out of the box comes with a UI that is very familiar to Windows users with this traditional panel and start menu. And Linux Mint has always been very functional and it just works really well out of the box. But my biggest critique of Linux Mint has been their theme look and feel. I've always been thrown off by this Firefox icon. It's kind of orangey and doesn't really look like the Firefox logo too much. But generally, I feel like their icons have looked a little bit off to me. And I've never really been a fan of their green color here or their green accent color. And in general, just their UI design. In fact, on their website previously for many years they had a very old archaic looking website and recently it was improved upon and modernized but i feel like that's generally their approach with the ui whereas linux mint has looked very similar in the last 10 years and it seems that maybe recently they're kind of aware of that and have been tweaking things although the most recent tweak was just making the windows a little bit curvy here on the top here you're not really going to convince a lot of people by getting them to switch over for privacy and security. You want to give them even more reasons like, hey, you know, leave Windows. You can get a much nicer looking desktop environment. They're also a little bit slower with updating their GPU and Linux kernel. They do give the user some good theming and customization options. Like if you go to system settings, they have a themes option. They give quite a few options but that seems to be it i guess it's better than not having any options at all and next up we have the deepen desktop environment and i'm running this off of manjaro deepen and deepen itself has also been a top-notch desktop environment for quite some time now it's very beautiful and it's arguable that this desktop environment may have inspired apple's big sur and even to some degree the new Windows 11 environment. It's the curved edges and it's got a very nice looking panel here. And by default, you'll have a start menu here and then the apps. And then on the right hand side, you have all the system tray icons. And if you click the start menu, it loads this sort of full screen Apple like menu of apps, but it gives you certain options to customize this as well. If you click these little arrows here, It'll scale it down and convert it into a Windows start menu. That looks very nice. And of course you can stretch it back out again and get this same full screen menu here. And you can also go click this to load a sort of lists full screen menu, which is also nice. So plenty of options there. 
In terms of personalization, you have a dark mode, which is very nice looking and has these accent colors, which doesn't give you that hue that the Zorin environment does. And what's cool about this is that it gives you a handful of different icon sets that you can use, which is nice because it gives you enough options, but again, it doesn't overwhelm you like KDE, for example. And generally, I like going with the papyrus icons. It also gives you some customization for the cursor theme and the font. And overall, this is a very user-friendly way of changing these options. What I argue is not as user-friendly is panel here because there's not really an option in the settings. You have to right-click and then change it to efficient mode to make it more like a Windows 10 panel. So I just kind of wish that they gave you some option in the menu or a setting. And then same thing with this where to make it bigger, you got to drag it here. And sometimes a user may not really know how to do that unless they sort of stumble into it by accident. But overall, the deep end desktop environment is very beautiful. I put it right alongside the Zorin environment in terms of its look. And then here we have another popular Linux distro that is Elementary OS. Elementary OS takes some inspiration from the Mac OS feel and it is designed to be very easy to use. And well, it has a dog by default, so at least compared to vanilla GNOME, that's already a plus here. And if you go to their applications menu, it's a very nice, simple menu here. And then you even have the option to switch to a more traditional menu here. Then you have a calendar and then some system tray icons on the top right here. The team at Elementary created their own software center that for a long while was probably the nicest looking app store. That is until recently the newest GNOME software center took the crown away. You go to the system settings, you'll see options to change the desktop wallpaper and also this appearance tab. And then recently they've introduced a dark mode and overall it just improved the look and feel of the UI. They have accent colors. Overall, I think it's a very nice looking distro. This OS though, it is a bit further behind as well in terms of like the latest Mesa graphics drivers for AMD GPUs. And then the one other cool thing about the team making elementary is that they're very active on social media. They post blog posts very frequently and overall their engagement with the community is top notch. And then next up we have Ubuntu. Ubuntu is using the Yaru theme They've recently been experimenting and changing a lot of things with the UI after each release. It seems like they've now settled on this sort of dark gray icon for their folders. In terms of their UI, they've had a very different kind of dock here where it's like on the left side as opposed to putting it in the bottom. Although you could always position it in the bottom if you'd like. Then they let you choose a dark theme, which looks very nice. And for a while, as of like a release or two ago, they had their own theme where their light theme had a black bar on top. And I thought that looked very good, but I think they want to conform a little bit more to the GNOME look and feel because now it has this sort of gray bar on top and then a sort of a white, pearl white look. So as you can see, they do give you some control over the look and feel. And really my main criticism with Ubuntu is the Ubuntu Snap Store or snaps in general. And then of course we have Pop OS, which is somewhat of a fork of GNOME at this point, but I wanted to highlight them because they do offer the user just a little bit more choice. By default, it does come with the minimize button, although no maximize button, but you can enable that with GNOME tweaks. It does come with the Pop Shop, which is based off of the same Pop Shop that the team over at Elementary created. The main differences being that by default, Pop OS includes the dock and you can disable it, enable it. It just makes so much sense to give this user an option out of the box. Instead of relying on extensions that could break after update, you could have it extend to the screen. And then they recently introduced their own show applications option, somewhat more functional because it has folders here that you can go through and it seems to work better on multi-monitors. Pop OS is very up to date with kernels and graphics drivers. So they're a very solid option for gaming as well. And even if you're trying to do streaming, tiling is a must have, makes it easier to really work with multiple windows. So if I were to rank these distros slash desktops, 
how do they stack up well in the top tier i think i'll have zorin and deepen they have by far probably the most beautiful uis and they give the user a lot of choice without over complicating things so this is the direction i think every other distro should go i'm putting fedora here but this is more vanilla gnome so i think gnome 42 they're getting pretty close to being top tier they just gotta offer the user a little bit more choice out of the box although you could argue that gnome desktop is not really meant to be used out of the box as you know ubuntu is obviously going to add their own extensions and maybe in that sense they could be ranked here but for now i'll put them in the tier below here kde i'm putting them here as well because i feel like they just got to simplify things a bit more yes they do have arguably the most customizability especially with installing new themes and icons it's just way too complicated for an average user so i'm bringing them down a notch there and then I have Pop! OS here as well because I think, well, they're kind of like GNOME right now with the right extensions, you know, like they have the dock by default, which I think GNOME should at least have an option for. I'm leaving them here and they have the tiling feature, so that's pretty useful. Then ranked below them is Linux Mint. They really got to improve their UI and get a bit more modernized. And they're just generally slow with improving that. Elementary OS, I have them here. They're kind of simple and they don't offer as much choice, but that has improved over the years. Then here I have an OS that I didn't talk about, but Solus and Solus Budgie. The reason why I didn't include Ubuntu Budgie, even though it's really nice, is that it feels like it's very similar to KDE with the installable themes and layouts. Now, of course, there's a lot of other distros I could rank, and maybe a lot of them would go in these other tiers, but for now, I'm just putting the ones I generally like. While no Linux desktop environment is perfect, in my opinion, it's very clear that different distributions and different desktop environments have their weaknesses and strengths. If you're a distribution that looks very nice, is fairly or reasonably up to date, gives the user choice, without overcomplicating and making that choice come with some instability or bugs, then you're going to do very well. And with all of this critique, you start to get a clear picture of what would be the perfect or ultimate desktop environment. I'm actually going to be doing a separate video announcing my own sort of desktop environment concept. It won't be an actual distro or desktop, but I do have plenty of ideas on, on what would be the ultimate desktop environment. Stay tuned for that video and don't forget to subscribe, like, share, and I will see you all next time. If you're enjoying my video, you can subscribe to me on YouTube, PeerTube, follow me on Odyssey. You could also support me on LibraPay, Patreon, and by shopping at Earth Hero. See links in the description below.